Welcome to the Kevin Bass Show Long Form Podcast. If you have an idea that you take from this podcast that you want to apply to your own life, you should always talk to your doctor before doing so and never construe anything you hear as medical advice. And with that, enjoy the Kevin Bass Show. But once I actually looked into the data, once I actually looked into what Kevin actually stands for, and people who have his position, what they actually stand for, my position changed. And Joe should do the same thing. He should be intellectually honest and go ahead and do the same thing and get the input of somebody who has a different view than him instead of continuing to spread this nonsense. What's up, fam? In this podcast, I want to talk about a recent statement made by Joe Rogan about glyphosate, Roundup Ready, Monsanto, and in this case, Bayer Corp at this point, and Kevin Folta. So Joe lashed out at Kevin Folta as a result of a response that Kevin Folta made to one of Joe's tweets, explaining the science and explaining why the coverage on glyphosate Roundup and uh, Monsanto's, what was formerly known as Monsanto's product known as Roundup, why, why that article was incorrect, uh, inappropriate, a misinterpretation of the actual evidence. And um, Joe gets quite upset here. He's misinformed. He's misleading. He doesn't uh, have people on his show that are, have different points of view to, than to which he's frequently or normally exposed. Uh, and he doesn't probably allow those people in his circles. And this results in a stilted and incorrect view of things that... Um, You know, he propagates to more than, you know, several million people, tens of millions of people, uh, which is which is really sad because it sounds like he wants to get things right. But because of the way that he goes about trying to understand the world and uh, only letting in a certain very select selection of people that confirm his pre-existing biases into his uh conversation space, as it were, uh, he systematically misrepresents the world and gets things wrong. And we're going to see that uh, in this video. We're also going to use some of the research published by Rhonda Patrick's former mentor, Bruce Ames. So Rhonda Patrick is a favorite of Joe Rogan on the Joe Rogan Show. She's, She's been on the Joe Rogan Show probably more than anybody else. Rhonda Patrick has, maybe besides some comedians, as far as science people go, she's been on more than anybody else yet. Her mentor, more than 30 years ago, wrote an article explaining why uh, Joe's point of view on this issue is completely incorrect. So uh, we are going to talk about that as well, as well as what the regulatory agencies over- overwhelmingly think about glyphosate and Roundup Ready herbicide, as well as explaining why they think those things. So enjoy the podcast. Uh, I, I think many of you will. Another thing I wanted to talk to you about is glyphosate. There was a, a recent study that showed that glyphosate appeared and see if you can find um, what the actual numbers were. But it was a shocking number of people's bodies contained glyphosate, mm. which is Roundup, which is uh, an herbicide that when you talk about people consuming large amounts of vegetables and large amounts of grains, one thing to take into consideration when you're dealing with monocrop agriculture is the use of pesticides. Yikes. Disturbing weed killer ingredient tied to cancer found in 80% yeah. of U.S. urine samples. Now, immediately upon publishing this, I went on to Twitter and I saw this shill for these um, herbicide companies that was talking well it's just a minimal amount a a tiny amount of parts per million you can't even find it if you're looking for it nothing to see here like what the fuck are you talking about it's poison there's zero amount of that that should be in your body when it's in 80 percent of the u.s population like how bad is that 
Yeah, I mean, you've got these like apologists for the right. whether it's the food industry or the cosmetic industry. The guy in particular that I'm talking about has he was wildly and just defending this, but he's completely connected to these companies, and and people were pointing it out. Like you have been paid for by these companies. Like you you are in the pocket of these companies. So Joe is referring in particular to this tweet by um, Kevin Folta and actually Joe's tweet, his own tweet. Uh, Joe simply tweets out the same article that he's referring to in the podcast with the same title. He doesn't add any extra information. He just tweets out the same thing. And then Kevin responds by saying, Joe, these are detections, quote, meaning the CDC found around a threshold of 200 parts per trillion, which is three minutes in 32,000 years. It has no biological consequence, especially because it is excreted from the body. These are from the urine. So it's actually just being excreted. Typical junk from this author, distorted tortured distortion of good data. I'm actually curious to see what the author is on this uh, article. Yeah, Carrie Gillum, who writes for The Guardian and frequently writes these sorts of alarmist, uh, misinterpreted communications on some recent studies that have been published, especially on uh, agriculture. So, Ke yeah, Kevin says these things. He says, these are just, just barely anything. Another thing Kevin says, plus the doses we are exposed to are incredibly small. We're talking parts per billion. Actually, this is less than a part per billion. Uh, it's a very low toxicity. We're not exposed to much. Caffeine and salt are more toxic. The author has a history of exaggerating and deceptive pieces. So what he means by caught caffeine and salt are more toxic. They're actually uh, on a gram per gram basis, or maybe it's a molar basis, maybe on a gram per gram basis. Uh, caffeine will kill you much, much, much sooner than glyphosate will. So if you, you know, consume, I don't know, a gram of, of uh, caffeine, I don't know exactly how much it's required to kill you, but a gram of caffeine, something like that will kill you, whereas a gram of glyphosate won't have any such effect. It takes a lot more glyphosate to kill. And same thing with uh, salt. So he's pointing out that caffeine and salt are more toxic than glyphosate. Would you uh, be concerned if you consumed one part per billion of salt? Well, no, but it's more toxic than glyphosate. So why would you be concerned about consuming uh, one part per billion of glyphosate, but not salt when salt has lethal toxic effects far sooner than glyphosate does. That's just like the first of many points I'm going to make here because that's like the most simple way of explaining it. It gets, um, it gets more technical and I don't want to dig too much into the weeds pun not intended. Uh, but I wanted to just make that basic point at the start. And then I wanted to transition to pointing out that uh, Bruce Ames, the mentor of Rhonda Patrick, a serious scientist, published this paper in 1990 in the Procedures of uh, Proceedings, sorry, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. It's been cited over 600 times by over 600 other scientists and or maybe thousands of scientists, in fact, because many papers are written by multiple people. So it's been cited by thousands of, th of scientists. It's called Dietary Pesticides, 99.99% all natural. The abstract says, the toxicological significance of exposures to synthetic chemicals is examined in the context of exposures to naturally occurring chemicals. We calculate that 99.99%, that is to say, uh, for every one, well, let's continue. We calculate that 99.99% by weight of the pesticides in the American diet are chemicals that plants produce to defend themselves. That is to say, for every one 
uh, say, gram of pesticides or one milligram of pesticides, synthetic pesticides that we're exposed to, we're exposed to uh, like 10 kilograms of of natural pesticides. It's a, it's a 1,000 or 10,000 to 1 relationship. So 10,000 times more of the pesticides that we're exposed to are natural pesticides versus synthetic pesticides. And, he, and the paper goes on. It says only 52 natural pesticides have been tested in high-dose cancer tests and about half are rodent carcinogens. So of the ones that have been tested, half are, are actually carcinogens. These 27 are shown to be present in many common foods. So many carcinogens that have been shown in assays, uh, looking at animals, are present in uh, many common foods. And they say, we conclude that natural and synthetic chemicals are equally likely to be positive in animal cancer tests. We also conclude that at low doses of most human exposures, the comparative hazards of synthetic pesticide residues are insignificant. So what he's pointing out is that plants already produce synthetic pesticides in order to uh, ward off predators. That's, that's what they do. They, that's, um, that's how they do it. Glyphosate is a synthetic pesticide. Okay. It's a synthetic pesticide and it's much, much less toxic than many of these natural pesticides and herbicides, for example. Did, 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 does Joe know that? Does Joe know that glyphosate is actually much, 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 much less toxic and poisonous? Poison is the word that he uses. It's much, much less toxic than many of these natural pesticides. And yet glyphosate, the exposures, the amounts that we found in the blood in these studies by the CDC, the amounts are so low that they will not have any biological effect whatsoever. And that's been very well characterized by the toxicological studies conducted on rodents. And I've actually looked at very closely I've analyzed many of these toxicological studies on rodents. What they do is they take hundreds and, and, and overall there's been thousands of, of rodents used in these studies. So they take hundreds of rodents in each group and they assign each group to a different dose of glyphosate to determine the toxicity. And so there's an escalating dose in different groups and they expose them and they watch what happens. And they then will do autopsies, very carefully done autopsies on the animals, looking at different organ systems. They'll look at the rate of death, et cetera. They'll look for cancers and they'll be very objective about it. And what's been shown very clearly is that the level of toxicity to which the consumer is exposed in foods is thousands and thousands and thousands of times lower than anything that you would ever see a toxic effect in an animal. <clears throat> what that means is, is even the lowest, lowest, most mildest toxic effect in an animal, once you finally hit that threshold, which is, by the way, it's pretty hard to get toxic effects in an animal. You have to feed them a lot of glyphosate. But the level at which you start to get some toxic effects the regulatory agencies have determined that the levels in the consumers, the amounts that the consumers have to consume are need to be thousands of times lower than this level. And I'm not a, I'm not a shill for, for any agricultural company. I don't, uh, I don't, uh, get paid by anybody to do this except for, uh, like a small number of Patreon followers. And then I get paid for YouTube ads and, and Google ads. And I don't make very much money from that. And it would be much more popular for me to say, oh yeah, to demonize glyphosate because it's an unpopular view to say that glyphosate's okay because it's become so just widely prevalent. The beliefs that glyphosate's not okay have just become so widely prevalent. So I'm saying this on the basis of the studies that I've looked at, which has been, I mean, I've, I've looked, read reviews that have looked at all of them. And um, I agree that, is, that in the case of glyphosate in particular, and many synthetic pesticides in general, but glyphosate in particular, it's extremely safe. And in fact, let's get to what 
Kevin Folta's motivations actually are. So Joe's never had a, an interview with Kevin. He's never interviewed Kevin. He's never asked Kevin for an interview. He's never been curious about what Kevin's views are. He's only assumed and ranted, ranted, literally ranted and lashed out at Kevin on his show in front of millions of people without knowing anything about him or knowing anything about his motivations. And I'll tell you what Kevin's motivations are because I've been following him for a long time and I haven't been following him through the lens, through the interpretive framework of, of some diet guru like Chris Kresser, who Joe likes, or some of these other people who have misled Joe. People have misled Joe. I've been actually following Kevin's work and trying to understand Kevin himself. Because for me, uh, I once hated glyphosate and once hated Roundup and once hated Monsanto, and I thought they were the worst things in the world. But once I actually looked into the data, once I actually looked into what Kevin actually stands for and people who have his position, what they actually stand for, my position changed. And Joe should do the same thing. He should be intellectually honest and go ahead and do the same thing and get the input of somebody who has a different view than him instead of continuing to spread this nonsense. So here's what Kevin is motivated by. Glyphosate is one of the safest agricultural chemicals that's ever been produced. And it's also highly, highly effective. So it's really good at, at destroying uh, non-crop uh, plants like weeds while keeping the plants themselves intact. And it does this because the plants have a uh, – uh, they're engineered – I believe it's with an enzyme that deactivates glyphosate. So it destroy it breaks down glyphosate. And then so while the plant that's engineered to break down glyphosate, let's say it's uh, let's say it's corn or soy. While the plant is engineered to do so, the wild plants around it are not and they die as a result of exposure to glyphosate. And then so you get much, much higher yields of your, of your product. You have a much more efficient agricultural system. You can feed far more people. You can feed millions of more people. And developments like this, glyphosate was not the main development, but, uh, but it's been part of a suite of different developments. Developments like this have led to what's called the Green, green Revolution which is to say it's uh, it's led to the ability to feed um, billions of people around the world. And without these kinds of developments, mostly it was synthetic fertilizer, but it's also herbicides and pesticides. Without these kinds of developments, we wouldn't be able to feed millions and billions of people around the world. And the reason Kevin defends glyphosate and Roundup and, and uh, Bayer, which is now the company that owns Roundup Ready, the reason he defends that is for because Kevin's an idealist. He's not a shill for the uh, agricultural industry or for big food. He's a shill for his idealism. He believes on the basis of data and on the basis for his caring for other human beings, for them not starving to death. He strongly, strongly believes that glyphosate is a, is a, is, is something that produces no harm whatsoever in the doses to which humans are exposed while, um, producing radically improved yields or substantially improved yields as one tool among other tools. I forgot. Uh, we have fertilizers. We have pesticides and herbicides, but we also have genetic modification, improved breeding techniques. And that's perhaps the real reason for the, the fundamental reason for the green revolution. But to all of these together are dramatically improving yields. So Kevin is defending essentially the, the, um, the lives of millions of people at no cost to the consumer.
And Kevin is sick of misinformation about all of this. And this misinformation comes from well-intentioned quarters of people who um, have a certain ideology that's not very thoughtful about why we do these particular things with respect to herbicides. That's why Kevin defends this stuff. And, and I know that for a fact. That's why Kevin spends his time doing this stuff. He's not paid by anybody. In fact, I talked to Kevin. I sent him a message and he says, um, I, I, I'm just going to quote his messages because he, he says it better than I could. I'm, it, <clears throat> he says, here they are dismissing an appropriate analysis because they don't want to think about it. Wild. So they're dismissing his analysis, his interpretation of the studies because they don't want to think about it. And that's exactly what Joe is doing. You can actually see Joe responding very emotionally about this. Super emotionally. Ridiculing it without even knowing what he's talking about. And he says, no, I'm not paid by corporations. I'm paid by the state at a land-grant university to clarify issues of public interest, including those associated with agriculture. Pretty sad to see their reaction. So he's paid by the state. He's not paid by corporations. And uh, Kevin said to me, he could take two seconds and look at my damn CV. All the bad guys lied to him and he bought it. He bought it. So it's really funny like how often Joe Rogan listeners, and I'm a Joe Rogan listener actually, but um, m many Joe Rogan listeners and Joe Rogan himself, they often believe that the authorities are frequently wrong about things. And, and sometimes they are actually, I would say. It, 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 even res people who are somewhat respected can be wrong. And uh, the establishment as a whole can be wrong. And in ways that are devastating and terrible. And we need to make sure that, uh, that, that we've minimized the amount to which that that's the case. But here, uh, he's just following a narrative. He's following someone else's point of view that he's uncritically accepted essentially as a sheep. So Joe is basically a sheep here. Joe is a sheep on this issue. <clears throat> Here's what the regulatory agencies say about glyphosate. And I posted about this. Oh, it's hard to even read because there's just so much. Let's open it in a new tab. And we can zoom in on it. Open image in the new tab. Okay, we're just going to scroll through it. The EPA, twice in 2017, the Office of Pesticide Programs, as well as the EPA in general, said it's not likely to be carcinogenic and no meaningful risks to human health when the product is used according to the pesticide label. Not likely to be carcinogenic in humans. 2017, 1992, the National Toxicology Program at the National Institutes of Health. Little evidence of toxicity and there's no evidence of glyphosate causing damage to DNA. Health Canada. One of their regulatory organizations, pro products containing glyphosate do not present unacceptable risks to human health or the environment when, when used according to revised product label directions. No pesticide regulatory authority in the world currently considers glyphosate to be a cancer risk at the levels to which humans are currently exposed. No hazard classification for carcinogenicity is warranted according to the European Chemicals Agency. European Food Safety Authority, glyphosate is unlikely to be genotoxic or poses a carcinic, carcinogenic threat to humans. ANSI, I'm not sure what that stands for. It looks like some French thing. And the level of, yes, French, level of evidence of carcinogenicity, level of evidence of carcinogenicity in animals and humans is considered to be relatively limited. Uh, there's a lack or absence of scientific data which will allow genotox, uh, oh, uh, Glyphosate-based products will no longer be allowed to use for uh, for use from the end of 2020 due to a lack of scientific or absence of scientific data, which would allow all genotoxical risks to be ruled out. Well, that's interesting. So in 2019, it changed its view. It says there's you can't rule out any risk whatsoever. 
but there's no data showing that there's any risk. That's interesting that the uh, Fr French would do that. Uh, in Germany, they said available data do not show carcinogenic or mutagenic properties of glyphosate, nor that glyphosate is toxic fertility, reproduction, embryonal fetal development in laboratory animals. Switzerland, residues in glyphosate in foods investigated do not represent a threat to cancer. Australia, glyphosate does not pose a carcinogenic risk to humans. The Environmental Protection Authority in New Zealand, unlikely to be carcinogenic to humans or genotoxic and should not be classified as a mutagen or carcinogen. Brazil, no evidence to indicate that herbicide glyphosate is carcinogenic. Japan, no neurotoxicity, carcinogenicity, reproductive toxicity, teratogenicity, and genotoxicity. Korea, epidemiological studies on glyphosate found no cancer link. United Nations, Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, glyphosate is unlikely to be genotoxic at anticipated dietary exposures, unlikely to pose a carcinogenic risk to humans from exposure through the diet. World Health Organization, drinking water quality guidelines, uh, does not represent a hazard to human health in drinking water. Exposure levels are far below the uh, NOAELS, the no observed adverse effect levels from animal relevant animal experiments, and that's from the International Program on Clin Chemical Safety, also from the World Health Organization. There is one agency in the world, in the World Health Organization, the International Agency for C Research on Cancer. It's one of four uh, that have assessed this issue. The other three have said uh, something different from what this uh, agency has said, but they said that there's evidence that it's genotoxic. <clears throat> So that's due to agricultural exposures. So there's some belief that when farmers are exposed to really high concentrations, that it can be genotoxic. But overwhelmingly, if you look at most of the regulatory agencies, and they're very conservative, super conservative. If you look at what they do about sunscreen, for example, they're incredibly conservative. The US uh, regulatory agencies are incredibly conservative. Uh, and they find no evidence of any risk of glyphosate. In fact, it's, again, one of the safest compounds known. There's no good evidence. There's been thousands of studies conducted on glyphosate and cancer risk. And they find no evidence that causes cancer, especially at the levels to which human beings are normally exposed. Now, let's talk about what actually is carcinogenic. 27 out of 52, if we go back to this paper by Bruce Ames, this is Rana Patrick's mentor, 27 out of 52 natural pesticides have been actually assessed in toxicological studies in the lab. I found that there's carcinogenic. It's like half and they're in common food products. They're in common food products. I'm actually interested. What are the common food products in which you uh, have these, pro these, uh, these toxins, these carcinogens? What are these food products actually? Maybe we should stop eating these foods. Oh, parsley, parsnip, celery, mushrooms, cabbage, collard greens, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, mustard, horseradish, orange juice, mango, pepper, basil, fennel, nutmeg, mace, pepper, pineapple, sesame seeds, cocoa, basil, jasmine tea, honey, 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 benzyl acetate is in honey, okay, coffee, apple, carrot, celery, cherry, eggplant, endive, grapes, lettuce, plum, pear, Potato, absinthe, anise, basil, caraway, dill, marjoram, rosemary, sage, savory, tarragon, thyme, coffee, apricot, cherry, peach, plum, coffee, roasted beans, chlorogenic acid. So actually there's a couple things in coffee that cause cancer now. Uh, apple, apricot, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cherry, kale, peach, pear, plum, coffee. And we've got all these beautiful, beautiful, terrible, terrible poisons in these natural foods. One is called 5,8-methoxysorolin. Holy crap, you don't want that. p hydra xenobenzoate glutamyl p hydra xenobenzoate Man, scary. Allyl isothiocyanate, D-limonene, estragole, safrole, 
ethyl acrylate, sesamol, methyl benzyl alcohol, alpha methyl benzyl alcohol for that matter. Sounds pretty frightening. Benzyl acetate, catechol, caffeic acid, chlorogenic acid. I don't want no chlorogenic acid. I don't want no neochlorogenic acid. But those are in pretty much all these foods that are actually healthy, right? Whew. I guess we're in trouble. We're all going to get cancer from all from from mangoes. Mangoes are going to like mess us up. Okay, so at these really high doses, you can find that these cause cancer. But what about like at low doses? Right? That's the question. At low doses. And at low doses, these don't cause cancer. It's the same as true glyphosate. So you're going to stop eating, Joe? You're going to stop eating all vegetables? You're going to go full carnivore? Is that the goal now? <clears throat> So to get to the finish here, <clears throat> the reason uh, Kevin does what he does is because he's an idealist. He's trying to protect the public reputation of a compound that's safe in dietary exposures. It's okay for 100% of the population to have some of it in their urine at super, 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 super low, less than one part per billion concentrations. And it's not because he's a shill. It's because this enables millions of people to eat. And Joe should go ahead and try to understand the evidence and try to get outside of his echo chamber on this particular issue because he could actually learn something instead of hearing the same stuff that he wants to hear from the same people over and over again. And it's actually sad that he continues to uh, spew out this garbage to tens of millions of people every year. It's really unfortunate because people get the wrong idea. They have the wrong impression. It causes them to make decisions the wrong way. Some cases harm their health, harm their pocketbooks as a result of buying organic whenever it's not necessary. And it can ultimately harm policy itself in Germany and in France. They're like removing glyphosate entirely due to politics. It's going to raise the price of food. It's going to reduce people's quality of life. Maybe Joe doesn't care about that as much because he's worth uh, hundreds of millions of dollars, maybe billions of dollars soon. He doesn't care. Not immediately, but he should. He should care. He should care about getting the facts right because the, not having the facts right can cause terrible damage to society. And that's what this kind of misinformation causes. This kind of misinformation where he's not being responsible. He doesn't really care about what the facts are. He's just saying things. Causes can cause great damage and is causing great damage to society. And it's really sad. Hope you guys have liked the podcast or not hated it. And if you have hated it, don't comment. I'll block you. Uh, but if you liked it, be, become my Patreon subscriber. Help support me. Let's keep the battle going. And let's never quit. And we will never quit. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Please check me out on patreon.com at Kevin and Bass, where you can donate and make this podcast possible. Also check me out on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok where you can find my latest thoughts on the latest controversies and findings within health science. Also check me out at The Kevin Bass Show, both on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. I hope this podcast was useful to you. If it was, please leave me a five-star review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. See you guys in the next episode.